Hi, you're watching Anthony with West Coast Custom Concrete, Bobcat Service, and Concrete Pumping. Today's video will be uh, the previous video I did with a skid steer. I demoed all this out. So this is the second part of it. We're setting it up. Um, we're pouring it pretty thick. We're, we're going to end up shoot pouring this. I didn't, I'm not going to bring my pump because it was pretty accessible. And I wanted to use a 50-50 mix. With, that's a, a 3 8 pea gravel and a 3 quarter inch rock mixed. It's a really good mix. So it's a parking lot, a lot of cars on it. So we're just going 24 on center with the rebar, number three. Going to set this up, tie it all up. It's pretty thick. We d I dug it out at six inches. That's what the owner wanted. So it's going to be about 27 yards, I think. So we're just continuing to set this up here. I didn't um, saw cut the asphalt because I put a joint on the outside of where I'm pouring and the asphalt company is going to saw cut it on my joint and re-asphalt everything. So um, I didn't have to saw cut at all. Here we go. We got it all set up here. Going to set the flow lines, throw the dobies in here. Here's uh, Charles Case bringing the concrete. We're going to pump it pretty stiff. I mean, you don't need to pour concrete over a a five inch slump. I mean, you, you need to know how to screed it and rot it, have the right kind of shovel guy. I mean, I see guys that uh, pour stuff piss wet on dead flat level ground and they think they're finishers and they're not. You got to know how to screed it. You got to be a professional crew. I do a lot of stuff where deputy inspectors are, are there and they take core samples and you can't add water. I mean, people that are pouring it piss wet on, on um, flat ground, putting in water reducers and thinking it comes to strength, they, they get their concrete where Jack gets his beanstalk. It's just not reasonable. You have to pour it pretty stiff. You got to know how to rot it. You got to have a good shovel guy because they take core samples on a lot of the city jobs and stuff. There's deputies and they crush test it. So, I mean, concrete's concrete no matter what part of the world you're in. You, you can't pour piss wet concrete that self levels. So we're riding this down, this little sidewalk we took out. It was all cracked up, so we're just matching it to the to the parking lot. This is how you get down. I have a professional crew wherever I pour. I can be as big or as small as I want. I can get 100 guys in a phone call and 10 semis and five, whatever I can do. I, I mean, I could do any size job. This is how you get down when you're rotting and screeding. This is a professional crew. This is how it's done. I've seen stuff on YouTube that people are, it's just so condescending watching. It's incredible. This is how you get down. This is how you do it. If you want to be professional, most of these guys have been through the unions and times. I pump for a lot of union companies. That's where I met a lot of these guys. Just rotting this down here. We're going to put a flow line at the corner of the sidewalk. We'll stick a pin in and a rod board, a screed board straight down and rod off the sidewalk. So we'll do this half first. Poured about a five. We just poured it however Chuck batched it and showed up with it. We don't add any water. Here's the flow line I was telling you we're going to go off the sidewalk with here. I do everything in-house. I own all the Bobcats, dumps, pumps. I have a couple of crews going. I'm about five videos back. I have some really cool stuff coming up. Curb and gutter for the city. Um, J ditches. Antiquing stamp. I have some really good videos coming up. Probably be interesting. It's kind of tight for Chuck here because that wall's right there and it's kind of tight. The other two spots I have, the access is really beautiful. You can just pull up and dump it. I should have put Polar Set or some heat in this mix or cal uh, accelerant, but um, I didn't do it. And there's one spot in the shade that hung us up all day. This stuff went off pretty quick on this side. It's in the open. See, there's a break right where you put the flow line to the existing sidewalk. All the water runs right off. My main crew was um, doing another job for me, Javier and, um, and um, Felipe and Milton and Jefferson and all my other guys. I have like three or four jobs going, and I'm like 10 jobs deep, I think. I'm not even taking calls to bid right now. Here we're finishing this up. Like I said, I have some really good, interesting videos coming up. 
So we're pouring this side out. It came to about 27 yards. It's about 2,200 square feet, I think. But it was pretty thick in, in a lot of areas. You got to know the stages. You got to know how to do everything correctly. Cut joints. Need a cutter. And here we go. We just turn and burn it sideways from off the existing we had. And we rolled this because there was a lot of three-quarter inch rock in this. So when we were cutting joints and skating it, they didn't want to hit the rock. So we just rolled it. Generally, I don't do this process So when I do concrete on my jobs. But there's a lot of rock in this. So it'll knock them down. So when he bowl floats, it'll knock them down even more. I didn't. I forgot to put adobes on this side for some reason. So I'm just. Gonna, that's me in the green. I'm just gonna uh, lift it up as they're pouring it. It's a pretty basic job. This is a very financially good job. There's nothing too hard about it. Or can go wrong with it. I mean, you want to get jobs that are asphalt and parking lots. Put a rough medium broom on it pretty basic and I didn't have to saw cut either I didn't have to come back and patch asphalt see when you're good you got two rod guys and a shovel guy you don't pull wet concrete with a rock 20 with a rake 20 feet across the job this is how you screen it this is how you get it flat this is how you get it down and you cut joints with a cutter and then you and then you get out there on sliders and slide it and retool them out. That's how a professional does it. So we're finishing this truck up. I'm waiting for Chuck on. He's going to be the third truck on the cleanup. Here's another spot. the The final spot I had right here. We poured that pretty stiff. It just it just wouldn't go off. It took all day because it was in the shade. The sun was coming around the building, so it didn't really get on this. The um, next video I'll have after this is I demoed out a um, foundation in Laguna Beach. I'm going to be pouring the foundation and all the site work there. And I'll be getting into um, bidding and how I bid stuff, how I price it, how much my guys are, how basically how I run everything. So it'll be a, a lot of information coming up of um, how I personally do it. And I can guarantee you I make more than anybody else doing what I do. And I'll show you how I do it and how I word it. So those will be some really good videos to watch coming up. I mean, the writing's on the wall. I didn't come on YouTube to get the silver medal. I try and be the best at everything I do. And I think it out. The guys I use, the equipment I have. I can run any equipment. Backhoes, excavators, concrete pumps, boom pumps. I've ran it all. I've owned it all. I've never worked for anybody. I'm, I'm self-taught at everything I do. But this is how you smoke it down. So you get it flat. So when you bowl float it, it's flat. It's not wavy gravy. You can't use a rake. You know, anybody can, like I said before, can, can screed or rod piss wet concrete that you kick it at self levels. But in California, you'll get thrown off the job. Like I was saying, they crush test most of the concrete and they take it a sample. The inspectors won't let you put a, a gallon in it, even if you're pumping it. You know? I mean, I see them throw thermometers on it. If it hits 98, 99 degrees, they'll reject the load. When I pump it at Disneyland and different jobs I was doing, they're pretty stringent. They're tough out here. Probably because of the earthquakes and different codes. We're finishing this up here, and then we're going to start um, tooling the joints, cutting the joints with a cutter. Yeah, this is the tail end of the pour here. In the open, it's nice. Room to bowl float. You can do walk, use a walk behind on everything on the edges. You can cut the joints with a cutter from good spots. Most of the stuff I do is really hard. And there's not good there's not good angles and it's really tight. Hanging out my bro Chuck here. Just had to wash it down in the wheelbarrow. I just didn't feel like pumping it. I'm so, I've been so busy. I'm bidding like two to five jobs a day. Plus, I'm pumping in the morning and I'm on my tractor in the afternoon, and I'm swinging by my jobs and I have like three jobs going. 
So that's the way it's going now. But Javier and my guys want me to get a couple more crews, but responsibility is a heavy responsibility. I don't know if I want to do that. Cut in my cut in my beach time. So we're throwing a bow float on this now. We'll be using a cutter pretty soon and cutting the joints, laying the tracks. Snapping the lines here for the joints. We laid it out where we're going to put them earlier when we first got there. We got there about an hour before the truck, and we just marked them everywhere we're going to put them. So we just come and snap them, then run a cutter. So a professional crew runs it. You, you cut the joints, and they're straight as an arrow. Then you use a walk behind on poles, not a walk behind on poles, another joiner, run it through and clean them out. Then when you go out there and skate, you bring another joiner in your hand as you're traveling and you clean them out as you're skating out. And you can't miss. I mean, these are just as straight as you can be. And it puts a deeper groove in it for expansion, movement, cracks. The crack inside that joint. Just always remember to join off corners because that's a um, definite crack spot. Like on the side of that sidewalk, you got to run one both ways or it'll crack. But you never know. I've seen it crack up the middle of the two joints I put in before. So it just helps you with your law of average of not getting a crack. But anything can happen. It has to do with soil, what sand they have, what Portland they got. And, you know, there's a lot of variables to it. The heat, the ground how quick the water bled through the concrete when it rose up to the top and then bled through. There's just so many variables. You just know them by doing it time after time. But this, this is just a basic job for me. This is, I mean, no anxiety, no sweat, just in and out. I left early when they were cl getting close to being done. I had to go to another job. Those are the joints we're cutting where they're going to saw cut it with the walk behind when they do the parking lot. So from that joint that Daniel's putting up over is the, is the property of this owners of this building. So right where we put the joint, they can saw cut on it. But these are the stages and the steps you have to learn. So if you've been doing it and you like watching concrete videos, cool. If you're new and you're learning and you're getting into it, you can see the stages of how it goes and you can pretty much get the gist of how it goes down. So you're not totally green when you go out, just learn the steps. So you know, the lingo. And then the only way you're going to learn anything is by doing it by hands on. You're not going to watch a video or, you know, someone's going to patronize you and tell you, you can watch a video and do this because it's impossible. You're not going to. And if it's at your own house and you watch a video and think you can do it, well, you, you gotta look at this piece of crap you put in for the next 20 years. It'll cost you more to take it out. People think hiring a professional is expensive. They should hire an amateur. And then they'll see how inexpensive it really is for the craft and the level of the equipment I have and everything I'm doing. This sidewalk's supposed to be, I think, about six feet or something. That's not right, what he's doing right there. Okay, this guy, he's taping it. Yeah, I was on the other side. I think it was five and a half feet. And you just use a walk behind and a cutter and cut the joint. I always look at guys' joints, how they cut them, how straight they are, how clean when they're done, and I know. The guy, I have about a 100-guy pool I can pull from you know, all kinds of guys. If Javier and my main guys are on a job, I can get a 100 different finishers I can use that are all A-level. They've all been through the, a lot of union guys that are free, freelancing now. They come in and out of the union. They'll... They'll go in the union to get hours in, and they'll come out. But there's always a gang of them to choose from. We're skating it out. See, that backside was in the shade all day. It hung up a lot longer. We were, we were there a long time waiting for that stuff. I should have put Polar Set in it, but I didn't. I forgot. See, when you're on your skates, you're just re-cleaning the joints. And when you broom it, there's no pace. There's no keep washing your broom off. This is how you put a professional broom down. This is a professional job. This is how you do it. You don't hose your broom off and you're brooming it too wet. 
because you poured it too wet. You got to learn how to do it stiff as can be. As dry as you can possibly do it, that's how you want to do it. It comes to strength. It'll, I've had jobs crush test after 30, 13 days and they've come up to strength because I pour it right. And when you do cities and hospitals and, and parks and stuff like that, you, you know what will fly because you've had a lot of concrete crush tested. And this is the next day I swung by. It's curing out. It's bleaching out already. Another beautiful job. Here's this side. This is the tail end. This is the part that hung up. There we go. Another professional job. Thank you very much for watching The Best in the West. I hope you enjoyed it.